All right, a little while ago I had made a comment about how that um, church buildings are very similar to Masonic lodges. And I'm going to show you some proof of that today. Here we are at uh, LBS or lbscottishrite.org. Long Beach Scottish Rite is what this thing is. Now, I want you to think about what they'll tell you when you go to a church building someplace, a Babel building, B-A-B-E-L, by the way. I'm not saying Bible building. I'm saying Babel, like lots of talking. <laughs> okay, some see some of you saying Bible building. They're not Bible buildings. But check this out. This is the uh, Lodge of Perfection, fourth degree. Okay, look at some of the stuff that they'll tell you. Duties. Practice, silence, obedience, fidelity. Hmm. Are you taught these things in Babel buildings? Yes, absolutely. Please be quiet. You're in the house of God. Obey. Make sure you're a good church member. Fidelity. The teachings of masonry are not to be taken lightly. Just change masonry to whatever church denomination you have there. Learning far outlasts physical monuments. It's exactly what they teach in church buildings. Duties are not to be performed expecting reward, but expecting personal satisfaction. Same exact thing. Are you a servant? Are you willing to serve your church? Same thing. For reflection, may one command who does not know how to obey. That gets into the symbols there. Let's go to the next degree. Fifth degree. Duties. Be industrious and honest. Isn't that what you're being taught in these Babel buildings? Life is uncertain. Death may call at any time. The uh, altar call at the end of the service? Oh, no, no connection there. The noblest portion of humanity is virtue for virtue's sake. Can you measure your age, not by years, but by good deeds? Does a life well lived prepare one for death? This is exactly what's preached in 99% of the Babel buildings out there. I shouldn't say 99%. 100%. Absolutely. This is the uh, sixth degree. Be zealous. Faithful. Oh boy, look at that one. Faithful. Are you a faithful church member? Disinterested and benevolent. Act the peacemaker. Check that one out too. Zeal and fidelity to duty are always rewarded. Isn't that what you're taught at church buildings? Yeah. Why act the peacemaker? Don't cause division. Don't cause strife. Don't say that uh, there's no scripture for church buildings. How about the seventh degree? Let justice be the guide of your actions. All actions have consequences. Be just in judging others' motives. Are the duties of a judge a burden or an honor? Don't judge other people. See? Same thing. Eighth degree. Be benevolent and charitable. Huh. And of course, you know, I realize some of this stuff is in Scripture. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about charity. Sure, absolutely. But the whole point is here, the Masons will copy things and they take stuff from the Bible, but your church buildings, these church buildings out there, Babel buildings, um, they're copying Masons, almost word for word. Masons have temples. You know, anyways, and altars. There are no temples and altars in the New Testament for Christians. Lessons. Benevolence and charity demand we correct our own faults and those of others. That which a man knows dies with him. Therefore, transmit your knowledge. Labor is honorable if done with sobriety, temperance, punctuality, and industry. Is this life more than a portal to another? Okay. Again, very similar to what is taught in most Babel buildings. Um, and I say most because there are some that are so wicked rock and roll type of things. They don't even tell you to do stuff like this anymore. But anyhow, duties to enlighten our souls and minds. Isn't that what you're taught at uh, church buildings? To instruct and enlighten the people. Are you a faithful member? If you're faithful, we can put you into a teaching position. You see? To be vigilant to the interests and honor of our country. Oh, isn't that nice? Because see, you're 501c3, so you definitely have to do what's best for America. Make sure you vote for the lesser of two evils and all, you know. Lessons. Ignorance is the principal enemy of human freedom. Not sin, you know. Ignorance. A free press is indispensable to true liberty. 
Remorse and guilt are God's punishments, and, most, and more severe than that of man. Do principles shape and control your conduct, or are you guided by sentiment? Interesting. And I'm, not, I'm skipping the little symbol things that they do, important symbols. Um, but it says, duties. Be tolerant and liberal. War against fanaticism and persecution with education and enlightenment. Ambition creates tyranny and despotism. Fanaticism creates intolerance and persecution. Are you tolerant, tolerant even of intolerance? <laughs> okay, getting a little confused here. But, uh, yeah, and it's funny, too, because aren't, aren't you taught that uh, going to a Bible building will help you with perfection, sanctification as a Christian? Yep, here we are at the 11th degree. Be earnest, true, and reliable. Be the champion of the people. Life is a school, masonry is work. Is masonry, masonry's work ever completed? Again, you know, just change masonry for Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian or whatever. Yeah. Find it interesting, though, the uh, important symbols, the flaming heart, like Catholicism. Mary's immaculate heart. Yeah. Here we are at the, uh, what are we, 12th degree. Seek wisdom through knowledge. Wisdom, wisdom is a gift from God and should be preferred over riches. Wisdom and knowledge bring honor, discretion, and understanding. Wisdom, wisdom teaches the knowledge of God. Wisdom enables immortality. Are you in control of your life? Could a mason step into the average church building and stand up in the pulpit and preach this exact thing right here word for word and be rejected? Uh, you know, or I should say be accepted? Yes, absolutely. Any Mason could stand up, full-fledged Mason, member of the Lodge of Perfection, could stand up in any Babel building and preach this right here as a sermon outline, and the people would applaud him and say, that was a great sermon. Sure they could. How about the 13th degree? Seek knowledge, be motivated by duty and honor. Moral character is a habit not formed in a moment. The great law of retribution acts in our memory as remorse and as the final judgment. Our idle hours and idle words subject to the great law of retribution. Again, talking about coming judgment, but from a Masonic perspective. Next one here. Assist, encourage, and defend the brethren. Hmm. Protect the oppressed and relieve want and distress. Enlighten the people. Serve the common good and be fruitful of all good works. Perfect Elus are both bound and free, bound by their obligation and free from prejudice, intolerance, and envy. Masons meet on the level because in their lives authority and liberty are in equilibrium. If perfection is not attainable, for what does the Mason strive? You know, talking about the Seal of Solomon down here too. Yeah, interesting. Assist the, breth the brethren. Hmm. That's what you're taught to do in church buildings. Chapter of the Rose Cross, Croix there. The 15th degree. Duties. Rebuild the Masonic Temple of Liberty, equality and fraternity in the souls of men and of nations. Hmm. F fidelity to trust, honor, and duty. Perseverance and constancy under difficulties and discouragements. Is equality the basis of all freedom? Again, very similar to what you're hearing in most churches. Here we are at the, what is this, uh, 16th degree. Duties, to direct and aid those who labor to build the symbolic temple. Interesting. Judge equitably and fairly. Provide aid of whatever kind to fellow princes of Jerusalem. Keep faith in the justice and beneficence of God. Press forward with hope for the persecuted and oppressed. Build temples of the living God in our hearts by following Masonic truth, justice, uh, equity, morality, wisdom, labor, fidelity, brotherhood to achieve immortality. Will you leave a noble heritage to those who follow you in this world? Interesting, again, you know, and, and I know some, some Baptists out there going, we don't follow that type of stuff. You know, we're not similar to the Methodists and the whatever else. Your church buildings are. And don't tell me. I've been to Baptist churches where there were open masons going there and nothing was said to them. Don't even tell me about it. 17th, 17th degree. Duties, to work, to reflect, and to pray. Now tell me, is there any Baptist church out there that does not have that as a, as a uh, you know, 
some, you know, as, as their thing that they do. To hope, to trust, and to believe. To teach, teach the truths that are hidden in allegories and concealed in the symbols of Freemasonry. An army of martyrs have offered up their lives to prove their faith or benefit mankind. Can Masonry teach religion without being a religion? What is the meaning of the vacant chair in the ceremony? And I've heard of Baptist churches, by the way, that have vacant chairs up front. And they say, well, that's for the Lord. You know, it's like the, it's the temple of God and he's going to sit there someday or something. I mean, seriously. Duties. Uh, what, which one is this now? 18th degree. Uh, practice virtue that it may produce fruit. Are you a fruit-bearing Christian? It's funny because Stephen Anderson said that about me. How do we inspect his fruit? Right there. Practice virtue that it may produce fruit. Hmm. Labor to eliminate vice. Purify humanity. Be tolerant of the faith and creed of others. How many church buildings teach that? A lot. We should have faith in God, mankind, and ourselves. We should hope in the victory over evil, the advancement of humanity, and a hereafter. Charity is relieving the wants and tolerating the errors and faults of others. Again, let's all get along. It's, you know, let's overlook each other's differences. We're all part of the same lodge, I mean church, I mean lodge, or what is it? <laughs> Isn't that insane? Do evil and calamity exist to provide an opportunity for the practice of virtue? Do your attitudes and actions reflect faith, hope, and charity? Don't tell me that masonry and Babel building attendance are very different. They're not. Duties. Be content to labor for the future. Serve the calls of truth with patience and industry. Destroy error, falsehood, and intolerance with truth, honesty, honor, and charity. Good will triumph over evil. The human intellect cannot measure the designs of God. If lived properly, this life is a bridge to eternal life. Do you live your life so that it is a bridge to immortality? Again, you ever see the little picture of the, of, you know, humanity on this side over here, and then there's a cross that spans this big gap to over here to God or whatever? Yeah, it's a bridge. That's what they're describing. All right, 20th degree. We're going through a couple more here, and we'll quit on this, but duties, dispense light and knowledge, practice the Masonic virtues both in and out of the lodge, be a good Christian both in and out of church. Yeah. Lessons, truth, justice, and toleration are indispensable qualities for a better or for a master of the lodge. Example is the best teaching method known. Lead by example. Have you hear that of a pastor? Sure. Is your behavior the same both in and out of the lodge? <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same philosophies of church buildings. The preachers preach the same stuff that's being preached and taught by the Masonic Lodge. <sighs> Crazy. What are we at here? 21st degree. Be humble and modest. Hmm. Trusting in God. Be steadfast and courageous in the face of adversity. The downfall of evil is certain. A free and independent judiciary is necessary to human progress. Journalism should be fair, just, and responsible. Do you keep the ideal of justice before your own interests? Yeah. Respect labor for its own sake and do work. Work is the mission of man. Hey, we're uh, going to have a work weekend here at the church coming up. Uh, why don't you pass around the, the thing there and sign up for it? Who's going to clean the church next month? Work is the mission of man. Hmm. If one finds for himself esteem in his labors, does the prestige associated with his labors matter? What a, th a thoughtful thing to think of. 23rd degree. Be devoted to the service of God. Hmm. Are you devoted to the service of God? Are you a faithful church member? Are you here every time the doors are open? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Constantly endeavor to promote the welfare of man. Act with proper subordination to your superiors. Uh-oh. Don't you speak against the man of God. Who are you to speak against the preacher? You leave the preacher alone, boy. You see it? Simple faith is wiser than vain philosophy. 
interesting. A society's concept of the deity and the universe are consistent with its development. What is the nature of God? Next one. 24th degree. Duties. Labor incessantly for the glory of God. The greater glory of God, like the Jesuits say. The honor of your country and the happiness of your brethren. Now you show me one Babel building out there that does not have that as their main slogan, the main thing that they do. Labor incessantly for the glory of God, the honor of your country, and the happiness of your brethren. Show me one church building that doesn't have that as their main motto. That's exactly it. The power of faith in a deity and his promises. The soul is immortal. There is one true God who is pure, absolute intellect and existence. Is the doctrine of the immortality of the soul consoling to you or, you or a source of menace and despair or merely a superstition? Hmm. Interesting. Let's see how many degrees there are here. Okay, 32nd degree. We'll go to the whole way to the 32nd. This is interesting. 25th degree. Fulfill your destiny and recreate yourself by reformation, repentance, and enlarging your knowledge. Hmm. You say, well, repentance. What about repentance there? Well, sure. People can fake that. Absolutely. Um, man is composed of the flesh, the soul, and the intellect. Man is a reflection of the divine. Do not weary God with petitions. Is it possible to find your way to heaven alone? Okay, next one. Practice mercy, forgiveness. Be tolerant. Be devoted to the teaching and diffusion of the true principles of masonry. Or be devoted to the teaching and diffusion of the true principles of Baptists, or Presbyterians, or Methodists, or Lutherans, or Catholicism, whichever one you want. Lessons. The trinity of deity belongs to no single religion. Uh, the truths of masonry are contained within the religions of the world. What is truth? Quote scripture. 27th degree. Be devoted to truth, honor, loyalty, justice, and humanity. Masonry is practical and requires its members to be actively involved in life. Virtue and duty have been the same in all times. It is nobler to err and make amends than never to err at all. Is this statement contrary to the virtue of prudence? 28th degree. We're getting there, you know. Duties. Be a lover of wisdom. Be faithful to the promises you made within the masonry. Nature reveals a power and wisdom and continually points to God. It's interesting because I remember James White in his book, The King James Only Controversy, he talks about nature's God and things like this, and finding God in nature and whatever. Hmm. The visible is a manifestation of the invisible. In the universe, two opposite forces provide balance. There is no death, only change. Philosophy is a kind of journey, ever learning, but never arriving at the ideal of truth. <laughs> it's funny, they don't even realize what they're doing there. Ever learning, yet never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, funny. The moral code of masonry is more extensive than that of philosophy. Is the universe friendly to me? Sure. 29th degree. Duties, reverence and obedience to the deity. Serve the truth. Protect virtue and innocence. Defend the people against tyranny. <laughs> yeah, okay. A lot of people out there. I'm a patriotic Christian. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ideas and institutions wax and wane in the great cycle of time, which is but change. Is virtue and armor stronger than the strongest metal? 30th degree. Labor unceasingly for the good of mankind. Arm yourself with faith in God, love toward your fellow man and knowledge. Great examples are the noblest uh, legacies from the past. They enrich a nation more than wealth or power. Are the knightly virtue or values obsolete in the modern world? 31st degree. Duties. Judge yourself in the same light as you judge others. Consider both actions and motives. Lessons. The good man is able to portray himself and his actions posit positively and not simply assert the absence of wrong in his life. Justice and mercy are two opposites which unite in the great harmo harmony of equity. To aim at the best must, or to, to aim at the best but be content with the best possible is true wisdom. Is a man a thief who steals a loaf of bread for his children? Referring to the uh, scripture, there, story in the scripture. 
Okay, 32nd degree. Here's the big one. Duties. A soldier of the lake seeks truth and knowledge. A soldier of freedom demands for the people free vote and voice and attains freedom of voice, vote, and opinion for himself. A soldier of the true religion combats spiritual tyranny with reason and truth. A soldier of the people encourages men to be self-reliant and independent. A soldier of Scottish Rite Masonry is zealous and ardent in the performance of his duties to God, his country, his family, his brethren, and himself. The human is ever interlaced with the divine. Only doctrines, faith, or knowledge which bear fruit in action are of value. To work is to worship. Do you endeavor to achieve the royal secret in your life and within yourself? See? Very interesting. All these different degrees of Scottish Rite Masonry and how they line up exactly with the philosophies that come through your local church. <laughs> yeah. But let's check out another website here. You say, I don't believe there's any connections with uh, masonry and church buildings. Okay. Ezekiel Bates Lodge uh, accepted free and accepted masons, I think. A and F and N there. But uh, Cornerstone Lang of the Second Congregational Church in 1903. April 11th, 1903, the Grand Master of Masons in Massachusetts, Most Worshipful Bayless. That sounds interesting name there. Sanford visited Attleboro to perform the cornerstone laying ceremony. And there you can see the Masons up here with the little aprons on and stuff like this. You know, veiling the profane world from their Holy of Holies. If you understand what I'm saying there. So there you go. There's the program for this event and the church today see but you know now that we have free freedom as Christians we should be building church buildings like this if only they would have had them in the first century they could have been so much more effective yeah here you have the first Christian church cornerstone there in uh, leveled by the Grand Lodge of Texas 1985 Disciples of Christ, organized 1860. There you go. How about another one? Cornerstone at Paul's Anglican Church dedicated by local Masons. And this is just a few stories, by the way. There's lots and lots and lots of them. Freemasons for Dummies. New Jersey Masons dedicate church cornerstone. Hmm. And here's a video I put together. Uh, my channel, Masonic Lodge number 666 in Lancaster County Paganism. Um, here you can see it's First Baptist Church. Dedicated in the cornerstone there is from the Masons. A Baptist Church. Hmm. And here's a little bit. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's in German. I think the guy's actually a Catholic, you know, pointing out the Protestants are Masons and stuff. That's a bit hypocritical. But here's uh, this big... St. Michael's Church in Hamburg. I'll play a little bit of it. You can see, look at all these Masons in here. Look at that. Huge Masonic gathering at this place. Shows a little bit of the video. I just have the sound turned off, but... So anyways, right there. Huge big Masonic gathering at this uh, big uh, Babel building, big Protestant Babel building over in Hamburg. And uh, but check this article out. I thought this was interesting. Masons and their black tie affair by David Graves, uh, 13th of April 2002. Since the end of the First World War, a black tie has been closely associated with Freemasonry as much as the secret handshake password and Masonic regalia. But not, or, but for not much longer. So they they used to wear black suits, white shirts, black ties, and a lot of the old time uh, Christian preachers. Here's Oliver B. Green, and I'm not saying he's a Mason. I'm not saying the guy was a covert Satanist or anything else. But I'm just showing the representation. This was the look back in the 1950s and 60s, you know, and it's ironic because he's preaching down near uh, Elizabethtown, PA, which is where you know, Lancaster County where I grew up. But uh, a lot of the old time, you know, Baptists and stuff like this, this is exactly what they would wear. They'd wear a black suit, white shirt, black tie. I was in, you know, different Baptist churches and there were some men that just, that was their outfit that 
a special uniform that they wore, and that's to wear a different colored suit was worldly or whatever else. Where'd they get it from? See, the reality of it is, brethren, uh, there's a lot more of this stuff going on than people want to realize and people want to admit to. Um, this whole Masonic uh, creation of the church building, and, and I do believe that that's where it came from. The you know the Catholics used it, but the Masons are basically coming from Catholicism. Uh, a lot on that, but this whole system of church buildings is wrong, and it's very distressing to me to see people just absolutely defending it and just. You know, they're just going to go down with the ship, you know, kind of a deal. I mean, you know, I, I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care, you know, I, I don't care about these things, you know. We can prove that there were good men that had church buildings and we're just going to continue in it and, and uh, you know, all this stuff. Brethren, you're not Bible-believing Christians if you go to a church building. Um, you got to come out of them things. They are wicked. They are satanic. Uh, there's just no scripture for it. I'm going to be coming out with some more videos in the future. Uh doing some more attacking on these buildings because it's time Christians leave them. All right, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.